what we try to do here in the sanctuary is we bring birds in um, and we try to connect them with other parrots so that way they can build community and hopefully fall in love. Yeah, we've had lots of birds fall in love. We see, honestly, it matches have been, yeah, matches have been made in heaven. In this cage, we have Conyers, and we have these two right next to one another. So they're in a relationship. On the left, that is a Gen Day Conyer. The Gen Day Conyers have a lot of green in their wings and orange on their bellies. And then we have the Sun Conyer on this very far right side. And then this is the green cheek. Kanya, she's the queen of the cage. And then her husband is Scarlet over here. He's a crimson belly. But the main reason why we acquire these guys is for such a small bird, they're very loud. This is Holly. He's an Alexandrian parakeet. But yeah, and he has a spoon somewhere in this cage that he loves like crazy that he throws up on the spoon. And that's the ultimate form of love for a parrot. So yeah, this is Lola. Her family before gave her up because they said they wanted their lives back, essentially. Everything revolved around Lola and they felt like they couldn't leave their establishment because she would scream and she would have like separation anxiety and they just thought it was healthier for her to come to the sanctuary. Ooh. Hi. So this is Kolohe, she's an, a Congo African Grey and yeah, her name means troublemaker in the Hawaiian language, but she's, she's a sweetheart. She was abused before coming to us. She just wasn't fed well, wasn't taken get great care of. She's been doing pretty good. So yeah, this is Lucy. She is a major Mitchell or a lead beater cockatoo, and yeah, her crest is quite stunning. It's like a fiery sunset. And they're an endangered species. They come from a drier inland area where there's a body of water in Australia. She's a show showbird for sure. She's just a stunner. So this is Kissy. So she is a Triton cockatoo. She is almost 50 years old and she used to be a wild bird who was caught and there was a gentleman who acquired her and had her for 35 years and then he passed away and relatives didn't know what to do with Kissy. So then they contacted us and we've had her in the sanctuary for about 10 years. She is blowing kisses there. She only does that around people and it's just her way of showing love and affection. So this was all established originally in 2001 with us becoming an official nonprofit parrot sanctuary and it first had occurred with us having parrots as pets, but then we saw an, a great need for having to provide a safe haven for parrots. And there are about 400 different types of parrots, and there are quite a few of them that are endangered. So this is Makana. So she's a blue hyacinth macaw. They're the biggest of the macaws, and they have the largest wingspan out of any other parrot. So that's about four feet for their wingspan. And they're endangered. They come from Brazil. And yeah, she is a, she's a stunner. A lot of these parrots um, have come to the sanctuary with quite a few issues and whatnot. And it's almost like we're operating as a hospice for a lot of older birds. And if ever there are parrots that are bonded with one another and one of them passes away, it can be such a hard thing for their partner. We have a, a couple who's been connected for over 30 years. And I would imagine if one of them were to pass, the other bird would go into a deep depression. It's us trying to make them as comfortable and as healthy and happy as possible. And that's hard to do with 105 parrots. So this is Boaz. So he's a blue and gold macaw. And he normally likes to fly on people's forearms and he takes the nuts. So I'm trying to, come on. There he goes, there you go, Boaz. So yeah, it's really fun seeing macaws in full flight, right? It kind of is how it's supposed to be. Come on. There you go, bud. So this is my mother, Dorothy. She's the founder of the sanctuary. She's hanging out with Sonny here and he's a Gen Day Conyer. Well, I'm grateful that Jerry is here to help us keep this thing going because it is a concern of people who have birds. And so I'm grateful that Jerry's here to help us carry on this mission. A lot of these parrots aren't, say, the most friendly and have been neglected and mistreated. And most people, when they're wanting to adopt a parrot, they want a sweet, lovey-dovey, cuddly bird. And we're very strict with where parrots go. 
and we normally interrogate them to where they live, what they do, what they have time for the bird, what's their experience. And part of the adoption process is they have to tour the sanctuary. And that way we can share the birds that are open for adoption. And that way we can educate them as well about parrots. And then they are really picky with who they like. So you can have parrots that only love one person and then kind of hate everyone else because they're, they normally bond for life with one person. And they're not domesticated like cats or dogs. They can bring a bit of a wild tendency into a relationship. So that makes it even harder to have them as pets. A lot of them can be super uh, rambunctious and really cuddly, incredibly interactive and sweet. I feel like I can just be in a cage watching them, you know, all day long, honestly. And they're, and they're just so vibrant and beautiful and these polychromatic colors and yeah, they're, they're fascinating creatures.